The following is an EWTN special presentation. from the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Baltimore, Maryland. EWTN presents the opening mass for the Fortnight for Freedom. Is that the signal? Good evening and welcome to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and to the opening mass for the fortnight for freedom. Our presider is the Most Reverend William E. Lorry, Archbishop of Baltimore. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. Please stand.
if I could invite you all please to be seated. First of all, I would like to welcome everyone to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, America's first cathedral, for this third opening mass of the fortnight for freedom. I'm very pleased to be joined by my brother bishops, uh, and I hope that you would join me in publicly congratulating the bishop designate of the Diocese of Springfield uh, in Massachusetts, our own Bishop Mitch Bozanski. Let's. is Baltimore's gift to Springfield. I'd also uh, like to welcome Bishop Martin Holly, Auxiliary of the Archdiocese of Washington, and also I'd like to welcome uh, Bishop Richard Spencer of the Archdiocese for the Military Services, and of course, our, my Auxiliary Bishop, Bishop Dennis Madden. Um, so grateful as well for Monsignor Parker's presence, uh, the Vice Chancellor of the Archdiocese, Monsignor Valenzano, the Rector of this Basilica, and Monsignor Rolfs, the Rector of Mount St. Mary's in Emmitsburg, and also Father Thomas Hurst, the Rector of St. Mary's Seminary uh, here in Baltimore. How grateful we are for the presence of many priests, deacons, and seminarians and consecrated women, religious, and men serving in the Archdiocese of Baltimore and beyond. A special welcome to Mother Marie Lorraine McGuire and her little sisters of the poor for whom celebrating this mass for religious liberty has added a lot of meaning this year. Sisters, we are so grateful for your courage and your witness. Very happy to have with us tonight Dr. Barbara Edmondson, Superintendent of Catholic Schools here in the Archdiocese of Baltimore, and many of our presidents and principals representing our 70 Catholic schools. Joining us tonight as well are representatives of our charitable institutions, including Catholic Charities, led by Mr. William McCarthy, St. Vincent de Paul of Baltimore, the Franciscan Center, and the Legion of Mary. We would also welcome our lay leaders in the Archdiocese, including those who represent our ecclesial lay uh, movements. And in that regard, I would certainly want to mention the large presence of so many from the neocatechumenal way. We have as well with us the Knights of Columbus, the Knights and Ladies of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, the Catholic Men's Fellowship, Catholic Medical Association, the Thomas More Society, the Catholic Business Network of Baltimore, the Baltimore Archdiocesan Holy Name Union, and the Religious Freedom Pilgrimage Group of the Parish of St. Peter in Hancock, Maryland. It's so great to see you again, thank you. Tonight we are most fortunate to have with us a first class relic of our church's newest saint and our beloved late Holy Father, St. John Paul II. Thanks to the Knights of Columbus and the St. John Paul II National Shrine in Washington, D.C., a portion of the bloodstained cassock 
that the Pope wore on the day uh, of the attempt that was made on his life in 1981 is here in the sanctuary, and it will be available for veneration immediately after Mass. And finally, a very warm welcome to all of you who are watching us on television and online. Thanks to our dear friends at Eternal Word Television Network. You can view or download the program for tonight's Mass, which includes the hymns and readings at www.archbalt.org. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, les doy un saludo de bienvenida a todos ustedes aquí reunidos in la Basilica de Asunción de la Virgen María y a todos quienes nos acompañan a través de EWTN. Juntos celebremos la Misa de hoy de la Solemnidad de Corpus Christi que marca el comienzo de la quincena, de la quincena por la libertad libertad para servir, especialmente para servir al pobre y a quien está en los márgenes de la sociedad. En la misa de hoy celebramos de forma especial el gran regalo que Cristo no, nos da con su cuerpo y sangre y pedimos que el, el encuentro con Cristo al recibirlo en los sacramentos nos guíe para seguirlos como discípulos a vivir en libertad plena y servir mejor al prójimo. And now, dear friends, gathered together truly as a family of faith, let us please stand. And let us begin our Mass tonight in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty oh God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40 years now, the Lord your God has directed your, all of your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and to find out whether or not it is, was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
penances he has not made known to them. Lectura de la primera carta a, lo, a los Corintios. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, la copa de bendición que bendecimos, ¿no es acaso comunión con la sangre de Cristo? Y el pan que partimos, ¿no es comunión con el cuerpo de Cristo? Ya que hay un solo pan, todos nosotros, aunque somos muchos, formamos un solo cuerpo porque participamos de este único pan. Palabra de Dios. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, 
unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, still standing and beautifully restored is the home of Charles Carroll of Carrollton, the only Catholic to sign the Declaration of Independence. On his estate, known as Doregan Manor, which is located about 30 minutes from the city of Baltimore, there is a lovely chapel, a chapel made necessary by the fact that in colonial Maryland, it was illegal for Catholics to worship publicly. Charles Carroll built this chapel not only for private meditation and spiritual comfort, but also because he linked practicing one's faith and serving the common good. He advised his grandson, Harper, to adhere to the principles of his faith, and I quote, not merely in theory, but in practice. As an elder statesman, reflecting on his life as a Catholic in public service, he said that securing religious freedom was among the greatest benefits of the American Revolution and teaching gospel morality one of the best means of preserving liberty. One might say that Charles Carroll cherished the, the link between the Eucharist celebrated in his chapel and his life spent in service of others. Almost 150 years later, the Second Vatican Council illuminated that link between Eucharistic worship and service of the common good, and it did this when it taught us that the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the Christian life. For the source of the Christian life is the love of Christ, Christ crucified and risen. And through the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, the Eucharist is alive, it's brimming 
with the presence of Christ. Christ is present in the priest who offers the Eucharist. He's present in the worshiping assembly. Christ is present to us in the word of God proclaimed, the scriptures. And Christ is most especially present in the Eucharistic species, that is, the bread and wine that are totally changed into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ Jesus. Today's scriptures tell us that just as God provided manna from heaven, as the Israelites made their way through the desert toward the promised land, so Christ, the bread from heaven, gives us his very own body and blood to cleanse and unite and nourish us as we journey like pilgrims toward the new and heavenly Jerusalem, our true and lasting home in heaven. This is the food that comes down from heaven and leads us back to heaven. And this food, the Eucharist, is meant to change everything along the way. And so sharing in the Eucharist, it's meant to change us, to transform us interiorly. As Pope De Benedict once wrote, he said, it's not the Eucharistic food that is changed into ourselves, but rather we who are mysteriously transformed by it. And it is a transformation, friends, that extends to every part of our lives. The Eucharist should shape how we think, the decisions we make, and our relationship with others. In the words of the second century martyr, St. Irenaeus of Lyon, he said, our way of thinking is attuned to the Eucharist, and the Eucharist in turn confirms our way of thinking. The form or the shape which the Eucharist imparts to the church herself and to our lives as individual Christians is charity. For the Eucharist is indeed the sacrament of charity, the gift that Jesus makes of himself thus revealing to us God's infinite love for every man and every woman. And so when we share in Christ's love by participating worthily in the Eucharist, we are formed, shaped after the pattern of Christ's self-giving love, that love poured forth on the cross and in every celebration of the Mass. This, this is the love that opens our minds and hearts and our eyes to the dignity of the poor and the vulnerable. This is what impels us as individuals and as a church community to spend ourselves in feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, providing jobs for the unemployed, serving the needs of unaccompanied minors and immigrants, reaching out to victims of human trafficking, freeing those trapped by the drug culture, and providing a good education for deserving young people from all of our neighborhoods, including the most impoverished. By entering the dynamic of Christ's self-giving love, we are impelled also to work for a just and a loving society where the dignity of each human life is respected from the moment of conception 
until natural death and at all stages in between. On many occasions, Pope Francis has made it clear that the church is not to be a secular social service agency, good as such agencies may be and necessary as they are. We are to be more than a mere NGO, as he says, a non-governmental agency. Rather, friends, we are to have a heart. We are to have a Eucharistic heart in all that we do, a heart possessing the vision, the truth, and the love that flow from the Eucharist, Christ's own gift of self. For in the Eucharist, we encounter the eternal Son of God who assumed our humanity. By doing so, he showed us how much the Father loves us. And in the Father's love, Jesus shed radiant light on the dignity of each human person. In receiving the Eucharist then, we as it were digest the secret, the truth about the human person. And for that reason, we are called to bear witness to teachings on human life, on marriage and family, on sexuality, and on a range of social issues even when those teachings are unpopular and countercultural, because in those very teachings there lies the key to human happiness and freedom. In the prophetic words of Pope Benedict XVI, he said, Jesus Christ is the lodestar of human freedom. Without him, Freedom loses its focus, for without the knowledge of truth, freedom becomes debased, alienated, and reduced to empty caprice. With him, freedom finds itself. Or, as Pope Francis said just yesterday, he said, religious freedom is not simply freedom of thought, or private worship. It is the freedom to live according to ethical principles, both privately and publicly, consequent to the truth that one has found. As the third fortnight for freedom begins on this beautiful feast of Corpus Christi, we have gathered in large numbers to worship in this venerable basilica and across the nation so that our Eucharistic Lord may help us and our fellow citizens to find true freedom. We are here to discover more deeply the truth about that love, which is the essence of God, convinced that when our souls possess charity and truth, our lives will be dedicated to serving in love and to doing the truth in love. In many parts of the world, people are dying because of the faith they profess and because they seek to worship as their consciences lead them. Here in the United States, challenges to religious freedom are more subtle. They are less easy to see, but they are very real. Increasingly, government at all levels is asserting itself in the internal life of churches, telling them that houses of worship are fully religious, whereas religious schools and charities that serve the common good are less religious and therefore less deserving of religious freedom protections, 
For example, in the HHS mandate for sterilization and contraception and abortion-inducing drugs, in requiring Catholic adoption services to place children with same-sex couples, in state laws that make it illegal for churches to serve the needs of the undocumented, and in discrimination against Catholic humanitarian agencies because they refuse to provide so-called services that violate Catholic teaching. This evening, let us keep in the forefront of our hearts the millions and millions of people who are served by Catholic schools and by Catholic humanitarian agencies like Catholic Charities and CRS, MRS and Clinic, by parishes and by generous individuals throughout our country. Let us look at the poor and needy, not merely as statistics, but as persons made in God's image and called to enjoy God's friendship. That friendship, which by God's grace, we have found in the Eucharist. We are seeking for the church and for church institutions, no special privileges. We are seeking the freedom to serve, or as Pope Francis put it, the freedom to proclaim and live the gospel in its entirety. May we find in the Eucharist the source and the summit of our charity. And in that charity, may we advocate by word and witness for the robust freedom of individuals and of churches, not only to worship without fear, but indeed to serve others and to serve the common good in love, in truth, in joy, and in freedom. May God bless us and keep us always in his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, dear friends, let us proclaim our holy Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Aware that only in Christ do we find true freedom, let us present our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. 
for the Holy Church throughout the world in union with Pope Francis. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world in union with Pope Francis, with Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore, and all those who are ordained to the service of the gospel, that their witness to the truth will encourage us to stand firm in defending our rights and beliefs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, our governor, for all legislators, jurists, and all those who work to serve the common good, that they will be given the Holy Spirit's gift of wisdom to uphold the God-given gift of religious freedom and conscience protection for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the educational, health care, social outreach, and charitable apostolates of the Church will continue to reveal God's power and love in the world and will continue to enjoy full protection to fulfill their mission, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of religious persecution, for those who have been deprived of their freedom of poverty, of property, or of life because of their faith, that the charity, truth, and justice of Christ will prevail in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an abundance of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, that the young people Christ is calling will hear his voice and will be given the grace to respond with courage and generosity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bless us with the strength of mind and heart to readily defend our freedoms when they are threatened and with courage in making our voices heard on behalf of the rights of the Church and the freedom of conscience of all people of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, that they will know the vision of the living God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, eternal God, in whom we find true freedom and lasting peace, Look with favor, we pray, on our needs, and seeing the faith that inspires us to pray to you, grant that what we truly need, especially the freedom to serve you in love, may, give, may be given us by your divine mercy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord bless us. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for at the last supper with his apostles establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lamb not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Dear friends, let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Before we conclude this evening, uh, I'd like to acknowledge so many that uh, work so hard to make this liturgy possible, beginning with the rector of this wonderful basilica, wonderful priest, Monsignor Valenzano and his staff. So grateful to you, Monsignor Art. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Mr. Douglas Brand Byerly, our music director in the Archdiocesan Choir, and all of our fine musicians who uh, lifted our minds and hearts in song and prayer tonight. Thank you. My gratitude as well to Father Marcello and Father Diascanis, our Masters of Ceremony, as well as for the coverage given this by the Eternal Word Television Network. Thank you to this network for all you do for the church. I'd ask you to uh, take your program with you because in it is information about the national texting campaign that allows you to receive important updates and information uh, regarding ongoing efforts to preserve and defend religious liberty. You'll also find information about the Fortnight for Freedom Pledge to serve, along with a list of service and educational opportunities in the Archdiocese. For those watching from home, I encourage you to visit the website of your diocese and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops for local opportunities and resources. Um, and at this moment now, I think it would be so appropriate if just for a minute, we would express our deep appreciation for all of those ministries that serve the poor and the needy, the tremendous health care apostolate in this archdiocese and beyond, and our wonderful educators and our wonderful Catholic schools all of which serve the common good and whose freedom to serve the common good we hope always to preserve. Thank you for all that you do. And just a reminder, after Mass, uh, the relic of St. John Paul II will be available for veneration. The closing Mass for the Fortnight of Freedom on the 4th of July, again, is at noon at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington. And we have uh, a wonderful reception set up in the side yard uh, being of uh, maybe not as great a faith as we should have been, we put up a tent in case it would rain. Uh, but please do join. I look forward to seeing everybody and uh, return often and visit this beautiful basilica, which is uh, our nation's first cathedral and so much a, at, at the heart of our nation's experiment in limited government and religious liberty. Friends, let's ask the Lord now for his blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.